Well, welcome back to Trailway Studios. My name is Reeve Andrews, and this is my show, Art of Reduction, where we hope to um, dive in a little deeper with haircutting, with the service of barbering, um, potential of just talking about how a shop works, how, what we do with our shop, um, and most importantly, you know, how a, a great service could really um, help y your business out, and more importantly, how we could help our clients really live the best life ever just by giving them a really great haircut. So we're gonna dive in today. We have a great model, his name's Greg. Um, a little bit about him, he has nice salt and pepper hair. A lot of um, sh you know, clips and videos you see of hair cutting, you don't really see too much salt and pepper hair being showcased. So I wanted to dive in um, with some salt and pepper today with you guys. And more importantly, I'm gonna do a lot of razor work. So I want you to watch my feather razor work I do today. So I think I'm gonna really dive in deep a little bit today. And uh, just most importantly, just touch, energy, and um, how you give a really great haircut and just breaking down a haircut. So thank you for watching. This is our first episode, so hopefully we could continue doing this. Um, we will do one about how we introduce and do an introduction um, of, our, of our clients, but we're just gonna dive right in. So Greg, can you come on with me? How are you? Hey, doing great, how about you? Doing well, thank you for joining us at Trailway today. So, most importantly, I think it's very important just to make your client feel comfortable um, in the chair. So, just a nice, uh, good, you know, gentle greeting with each other, nice handshake, look them in the eye. Um, is, is always important just to kind of, you know, break the boundary, get a little touch in, show them that you care, show them that you're professional, and um, it's just a great way to start the service is just with a good classic handshake. So. Today, I'm going to kind of showcase my model. Him and I have already talked about what we're doing today. Um, we're going to go a nice low fade, really tapered out real low, um, transition into a lot of length, a lot of texture on top. Um, if you notice, his hair kicks to the right, so we're going to play with that. Um, and yeah, so just looking at him, what we're going to do today is we're going to do kind of two haircuts in one. Um, I like to blend cosmetology and barbering together. So I like to do cosmetology tops and barber sides. So with that being said, I kind of give them a blueprint of what I'm gonna do before I even start. So with Greg, I would have already told him, you know what Greg, today we're going to do kind of two haircuts in one. We're gonna do a nice clipper cut from about your occipital bone down and from your occipital bone up, we're gonna do a lot of razor work and scissor work today. Um, just giving him an idea, a blueprint of what we're about to do um, always makes him feel comfortable. He can kind of see the vision, and if there's anything wrong with the vision, we can talk about it and figure it out. So I'm gonna dive right in. I'll tell you exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do a clipper cut from about here down. Pretty classic fade, um, probably two guard, one and a half guard, one guard, half guard, and we're gonna zero everything out on him. Um, if you, it's hard to tell, but he kind of pinches in a little bit up in here and kind of a little wider, his hair's nice and thick here. Um, he has thick hair uh, with gray, kind of deal with a little bit of wiriness, so we'll try to tie him all that down. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna be using um, JRL clippers today. Um, I do have a Hattori Hanzo trimmer that I'm gonna be using as well as one of my favorite, just old school magic clip that most everyone has. Um, and then I will be using a feather razor today for the top majority, trying to show off some skills. And then definitely some Hattori Hanzo texturizers, thinning shears, and main shear. So those will be the, my tools I'll be using most today. Um, so let's dive in. I always heard that that first initial guideline that you set is the most important. Um, so let's just kind of have some fun. I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive today just because we're on camera and um, why not? So I'm gonna dive in. I'm gonna try to keep this super low. Um, some people like to do a lineup first. Some people don't. I could do both. So I'm just gonna go through and kind of make this kind of aggressive at first. And I've always heard, like I said, that first initial guideline really sets the tone for this haircut. 
So just taking my Tori Hanzo trimmers, kind of looking the way his head shape grows, or his hair grows and his head shape, kind of finding that perfect kind of, it's almost like you're building a car or you're shaping a car and just the fenders of that car. You know, this initial cut around here is almost like creating, I would say like a fender around a wheel well. It's kind of a good analogy of the cut that we're doing. So I'm just gonna take this down, just being patient. Again, I'm not really pressing too heavy, very light, very soft. You can kind of see how light my tool is. It's just a nice, light, soft touch. I'm not trying to irritate his skin at all. And I am just going to slowly just kind of do a slight lineup. This hair up here is not going to be nearly as short as it is nice and low. So I'm just going to do a, just a little detail work as we go. Again, I, I'm a big fan. If you have the tool in your hand, try to utilize it as best as possible. So since we're down here already kind of by the sideburn, why not do a little work around the sideburn? I'm already kind of around his ear. He has a little bit of hair, you know, around the ear. So why not do a little bit of cleanliness around his ear while we're here? Um, my job as a barber is to get every single bad hair that he has. So, you know, if you see any hairs around the neck, the ear, eyebrows, nose, you know, we're not just here to cut the hair on the head. We're here to cut every bit of hair. So again, just keep cleaning up my line. And again, I, I kind of work in two. So whatever I do to one side, I actually kind of like to go and instantly do the other. Um, some people would just work on this one side and then get done with it and then transfer to the other and get done with it. Um, so that's cool though today, I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth on how I do it. So that one side, you know, I drew that line out. So I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna try to, what I like to do is I'm trying to match my line from here to here, just get in front of them, kind of see where, I like to put my finger and kind of see where that point is. And I could just come right over here, kind of notch in real quick where that point is. And then that's real easy for me to find out where that line is. So now I could just make it natural. Again, I like, always like to tell my employees that a clean line equals a clean haircut. So all your guidelines, if you can make them as clean as possible, the better. So again, a clean line equals a clean haircut. He has nice thick hair. It's been about a month since his last haircut. On average, your hair grows about a half inch a month. So that gives you a good kind of representation on you know, how much hair I need to dwindle down to make my client feel comfortable. So if he's been gone for two months, half inch a month, he's about at about an inch of regrowth. And you kind of just do the, keep doing the math to kind of figure out how much hair, you know, he has on his head that we need to dwindle down. That's just a great way to kind of give yourself some safety to know that you're not going to go too short. So if he's been gone a month and his hair is a half inch longer on average than normal, then, you know, if you take it right underneath a half inch, you're going to still be playing it safe to know that we didn't go too short. So I like to get in the back and just try to make sure it's evened up a little bit. Again, clean lines equal clean haircuts. You just don't look or you just don't. Yeah, you just don't look at the haircut. You actually hear the haircut. So when you're using your tool and you're hearing that hair being taken um, from the cut, that really means that continue to stay there. So again, I'm not taking this too high. A good kind of roll of thumb is you just kind of put your fingers up. I like to start with like a two finger. So I just drop my line in real quick there. Connect the two guidelines that we did on the side. Making this nice and clean. Again, clean lines equal clean haircuts. Working everything out. Clean. 
cleaning up this little C section real quick. Slight little line up here. Again, we'll go all through this again to dial it in more and more. Again, it's called the art of reduction because, you know, I'm taking a, a, a mass, a large mass, and I'm dwindling it down to a different shape, different texture, um, different size, different feel. So we're really changing the whole concept of his hair in this haircut. And uh, really, you know, the main objective of the art of reduction is to re reduce it down to an appropriate length for his lifestyle, for his work, for his home life, um, for how much, you know, what he does in the world. You know, you're truly trying to make this haircut be a part of him. Um, one thing I like to do is I like to clean off my clients quite a bit. So I don't like a lot of hair always kind of building up. So I'll always kind of clean them up a little bit. So that was a no guard. So right now, my main objective is to get really clean on his skin. So my main objective, that little guard from here down, I'm just going to start really dialing this in, getting a little tighter. So I like to use just a very light hold hairspray. And I'm just going to kind of hit these little corners where I just did. And then I'm going to jump on my classic feather razor. Again, I'm not really holding really strong. It's a very easy feathery hold. Like you can knock this out of my hand very easily. And all I'm going to do is just really start to get the rest of this hair nice and clean. What that light hairspray does, I feel as though it just gives something for that blade to really grab onto that. That hairspray hits that baby hair, that small hair, gets onto it a little bit. So when that blade kind of runs down the neck and onto the hair, I swear it has a little bit better of a grip and that blade really is able to, to really get a nice cleaner look. So I even like to creep it down on his cheekbone a little bit, kind of line that up a little bit. Again, my goal is to do, be doing stuff and to be so detailed, you know, that, you know, the guy knows when he's getting a haircut with me that, you know, the guy up the road at Joe's Barbershop is not doing this, but Reeve is. So hopefully you guys could just kind of take just anything, one little idea, one little movement that I do and apply it to some of your haircuts and uh, really see what could happen. Um, a lot of this I just taught myself. So... I know I'm doing things wrong. I know I'm not the best. I know I have so much other stuff to learn. Um, but that's what's amazing about this field is that you're never going to be the best. You're never going to be the cleanest fade master. Like there's going to be someone out there before you or after you who's going to be great. So it's just really cool to be a part of something and trying our hardest to master it, even though we're never going to master it because... It's so in depth and so again, just using my razor to slowly reduce, get a little tighter um, because what I'm about to do is I'm about to jump on my foil razor and we all know with a foil razor, the hair has to be really short for it to really do its thing because if you run a foil shaver on longer hair, it doesn't work. So again, I like to, if I have the tool in my hand, I try to use as much of it as possible. So it's nice to use a feather razor to do a little bit of eyebrow detail. So I get inside the eyebrow in the middle, kind of line up his eyebrows. I'll get underneath. Again, I'm using a, a nice firm touch with my thumb. Wherever I do any razor work, my thumb kind of follows, kind of makes the skin nice and taut. Again, allows for that tool to really get in there and do its job. Um, I'm working on one side of his face. You know, I could kind of come over here and do this like this, but you know, if you're using a razor, you know, you want to have a nice firm ground. So if you're gonna do anything, just kind of step over, and now I'm on this side of him, so I can start working on the right side of his eyebrow, right side of his face, and then my thumb is still right in place to do all the work I need to make this a safe procedure and not cut my client. So lifting up his eyebrow, again, a, a huge one to get is right here, this little contour line right here underneath his eye, gets a lot of baby hair. Um, so when that sun is coming in and it hits that baby hair first, it dolls it out and then it gets to the skin. Well, if you take that baby hair off where that sun is just naturally hitting the skin first, 
kind of adds a little bit of pop of color to your gentleman. Um, I swear it kind of brightens up their eyes a little bit, makes them a little bit more awake. So I think it's a very important part to take a razor or a foil shaver, whatever you're comfortable with, and really clean up around the eye, from underneath the eyebrow, to the corner, to underneath, to the nose. Um, very important parts that a lot of barbers and stylists skip out on. A, your client feels it. He feels your attention to detail. He feels you putting a little, in a little extra work. And more importantly, when he opens his eyes, it's gonna feel different. And that is one thing that we are trying to really do with every client that's in our chair is to make them feel different. So jumping on my foil razor, I like to always add some kind of lubricant before I even apply any kind of metal or kind of tool to it. So I'm adding a little Sterling's gold spray to it. Um, adds a little bit of a, a slip, slip to it so it runs around his face a little bit more. I'm gonna creep right up underneath that guideline and I'm gonna come down. So all my motions are gonna be on the downward stroke like this for the first kind of couple times around. And what I do is I kind of a typewriter motion. So I'll start on one side and I'll go all the way around and all of a sudden I get to the end and that's my typewriter. All of a sudden it clicks here, I stop and I transfer all the way back around, stop all the way back around. And once I feel as though that's nice and clean and then I will flip up and meet in the middle. So let me kind of go at full speed real quick. Foil shaver. All my strokes are down, down. You could hear my, my tool grabbing hair, so you know it's doing a job. You know you need to be patient and allow the tool to do the work. You could hear it right there, hear it. But if I go down here, you really don't hear anything because there's no hair. So that, that's what I'm trying to say is like, you could hear the haircut, so just be patient. Be quiet sometimes, listen to the haircut. It's just not looking at the hair, it's feeling it, it's listening to it, it's seeing it, the whole gamut. If you notice, I'm using the back of my hand to kind of A, add some tension, but even more importantly, I'm feeling the back of his neck to see if I feel any kind of prickly hair or anything, you know, stubbles. Um, you could feel it when you're using, you know, the normal side of your hand but you can definitely feel it when you use the back side of your hand. So just all, and then it feels good for the client to kind of run your hands like that. So let's continue working down, getting it nice and white, having this white skin and then fading it up into this kind of darker hair up top will really create a nice contrast, I could already tell. Again, being patient, allowing the tool to do the work. Again, like I said, if I have the tool in my hand, my main objective is to use it to its fullest so I'm not bouncing back and forth from tool to tool. Again, time is everything. You know, the more time I could just focus on the hair and actually the tools being on the head and doing work, the better. Um, again, that's what they're here for. They're here for haircuts. Again, I like, I, I, once I have the tool, I use it forever. So I'm gonna sit here, kind of do some work around his eyes. As long as, so his, his eyebrow grows this way, his eyebrow grows this way, so as long as I don't, come up into it, I could actually take my foil shaver and run right over his eyebrows. And all that's gonna do is gonna get real tight underneath low and any bitty kind of wild hair in his eyebrow, it will creep up there and get, but it's not gonna rip off his whole eyebrow. So as long as you're going with the eyebrow, nice soft touch, run it right over, work over his nose and work it in. Again, all easy to do in your service if you're thinking about it. This is all just added detail work that really is gonna make this haircut pop off. Beautiful. So now you can just kind of tell where we're at now. I got my guideline, my low fade kind of really started, and now we're gonna advance up the cut. So. I personally am just a big fan of the Magic Clip. I know it's been around forever. You could even see how much like I've used it, you know. So this is my tried and true. I think we all have our, our guns that we need to stick to. 
so I feel very comfortable using this tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my guard completely and I'm gonna start my next guideline with an open guard. So I like to start in the back. Straight up. I like to go kind of in a, a, a V shape when I'm kind of doing my, um, my fading or try, trying to create this next guideline. Um, that V really allows you to kind of get inside the growth of that hair pattern and really get every single hair in a really nice fashion. Again, I like to bend the ear. You know, the ear is flexible for a reason. Some guys have, you know, more flexible ears than other, but you can kind of tell at the breaking point of when you're pushing too hard or not. Um, so don't be afraid to move this ear out of the way so you could get into where you need to go. Nice, firm kind of touch to this. Again, I, I'm not really gripping it too hard, but I also don't have a super feathery touch. It's a nice kind of even, firm grab, flipping out at the very end. Again, even this next guideline I'm creating, I'm gonna to try to keep it super clean. Again, a clean guideline is a clean haircut. Again, over here, flipping the ear down to get out of my way. Flipping up. Trying to keep this guideline as clean as I can as I go. Again, this is such a great opportunity. Um, I just love barbering. It's just an opportunity to really change someone's day, um, change their week, change their month, give them confidence, give them opportunity, um, get to talk to someone, get to touch someone in a positive way. You know, majority, you know, I would really like for this show to just kind of showcase the power that a barber has, you know? because everyone gets a haircut. Everyone at some point in their life will sit down in someone's chair to get a haircut, right? So imagine if all barbers kind of knew how to be positive, how to give a good positive touch, how to uplift people, um, how to make them feel good. If we were all, every barber, every stylist was truly on the same page to try to make their client's day better through a haircut, I really do believe this world would be a slightly better place. So hopefully if anything you guys get from this is just know that there's power in the haircut, there's power in the service, and um, there's even more power if you're just a good person. So I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Um, and hopefully we can make more and more of these videos to kind of showcase you know, a lot of different haircuts, different textures, different ethnicities, different humans. Um, and, and just bless a lot of people through our actions. So again, that's my guard is completely open, trying to make this guideline as clean as possible. So let's do a little bit of detail work. That's starting to look really good. Patience, feeling confident in yourself, goes a long way. So here in a second, I'm about to put on my one guard. I'm skipping my half guard, going straight to my one guard, and I'm going to keep this open as well. Starting in the back, I'm going to have you tilt your head down, just straight up, trying to keep a nice, clean guideline. Keep a nice clean guideline, keep working it up. Listening to the haircut, moving them around. So far so good. Again, I like to be always kind of touching my client. So even in the fade, I would be up in here with my thumb, giving some nice pressure, getting that skin taut so my clipper could really get up in there, do work. Um, for a lot of you lady barbers out there or girls who are, who are thinking about barbering, I think the hardest thing for me to teach to women is the fact that you never had a men's haircut given to you. So you don't know how it feels to have someone really in there moving your skin, moving around. 
it feels good. Like, don't be afraid. I think a lot of women are just too soft in when they're touching their client. So don't be afraid to really get in there. Move that skin around. It feels like a head massage. It feels good in control. So don't be afraid to get in there and really, really move that head around. And, and more importantly, it's to make your job easier, to make the haircut better, you know, and it feels good. So if I'm sitting here, I'm, this is what I would normally be doing. I would probably be lifting up on that skin, have a nice firm touch. He's able to bring energy through him out to me. You know, a good barber is just a neutral. You know, they're, they're going to say a lot of things in the chair, a lot of, a lot of sad things, a lot of positive things though it shouldn't affect us. So our, my main objective is just to be a positive person, get a great haircut, and hopefully, you know, my client feels personally better, has a little bit better energy after leaving my chair. So there's a lot of levels to this. It's deeper than just cutting someone's hair and them in and out. Like it's, it's just so much more than that if you're really trying to be a world-class barber and really try to make your community better through haircuts. So. This is a one all the way open. I really don't hear much hair being taken anymore, so I feel confident moving to my next guard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip my one and a half guard and jump straight to my two guard, but this time I'm gonna actually close my two guard. Instead of leaving it open, I'm gonna close it, and I'm gonna start my same area in the back, okay? Again, straight up. If you notice when I'm getting to the side of this hair, you know, I'm coming straight up on the back, but when I'm rounding through here, I start to tilt my trimmer out a little bit because I don't want to take this real short. You know, I, I'm trying to keep it tight lower here and have it get longer as I, I transition up the cut. So if you notice, I'm putting a lot more pressure low on my clipper here and going around his ear. And what that's going to do is it's going to leave it longer up in here each time. So I don't have, I'm not going to keep raising that fade. I want some contrast. I want some darkness right here. So I'm just going to keep this going, listening to the haircut. Again, I want some of that, that, that contrast. So I'm keeping it, you know, low here and it extends and fans out as I go up. Feeling really confident. And pretty soon I'll jump up to a three and a half, probably a four guard, five guard. And we'll do some scissor, well, razor work actually this time around. So let's take it over here. Again, I'm coming straight up on the back. And like I said, I tilted and to start to get my side here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite. I'm coming up here, coming up, coming up. And all of a sudden, I'm going to start tilting my clipper down to start doing this side because I want it shorter low and I want it to get it longer as we adventure up. And that's the way I'm doing that. So I'm keeping it super low, flipping it. Again, I'm keeping this high. This is not even touching this hair. I'm only cutting this band right here with my clipper. Listening to the hair. Being patient. Working it around, tagging it all in together, melting it all in together. So far, just with, just with the three guards I had, I'm already seeing the shape. I'm liking the shape. I'm building up more confidence within myself as it, as it takes shape and starts to, to pan out. And I, I see my vision taking place. Like your anxiety should start to lower. You should start to feel a bit more comfortable in the service and like be able to talk a little bit more, you know? So it's like once you, we all have a point early in our career that, you know, once we get past that point, it's all downhill from here. So the, the what you're trying to do is get to that point as quick as possible. Like at what point do you feel confident? And, you know, are, are you scared of the fade? Are you scared of the transition from the skin to the fade? Do you scare, is it scared when you pop out your scissors, you know? So, Hopefully through these episodes, we'll kind of break down all these scary scenarios so you feel a little bit more calmer behind the chair, feel better behind the chair, because in the end, the calmer and better you feel behind the chair, the better your client's going to feel in the chair. So, so what I'm going to do now is 
I probably would transition, sorry, I, I'm going to, I would probably transition tighter, but let's just continue fading up and then we'll fade right back down. So this was a two guard closed. We're going to skip the three guard and jump to my four guard closed. And then, because again, my main objective, I want length through here. I want some texture through here. So if I would just kind of jump into my three guard, I feel like I would start to get too tight too quick. So this is just gonna give me a little bit of wiggle room, keep it a little longer at my four guard. And, you'll, and really, with this four guard, it, it, you will start to see it kind of just melt right into each other. And if you know, if you see it melting right into each other without all your finessing and fading back down, you really are sitting on a really pretty haircut and she'll feel really confident that it's going to all work out. So again, four guard, running it up, nice little flick out when I get there. I like to kind of put some pressure on the top of his head, push this hair down a little bit more through here, okay? So I could really kind of get in there and make a clean side shelf right here. Again, flipping up. One thing I need to teach everybody, clipper control or guard control as I call it. So here's our classic guard. Number one, you put it on, hear that click? That click's huge. That click's safety, not gonna pop off. So for anyone new, just make sure that clip, they hear that click. But even more so, that little tab at the very end of this, I always keep my finger on it. So I call this guard control, okay? So no matter which way, I'm coming at this fade, I always have my finger on that back tab, and all that's gonna do is that, that guard won't fall off. You know, that's the last thing you wanna do is work so hard, and all of a sudden that guard falls off your four and you put a soil patch in your man. So make sure you always have guard control. I know it gets a little awkward if you maybe have smaller hands, but don't make excuses, just learn, because I have some girls working for us who have very, very small hands and they do it. So if they can do it, you can do it. And more importantly, you're gonna save a bad day for your client and for yourself um, if you don't do it. So, like I said, I'm on my four guard. I have it closed. Why not open it up a little bit all the way? Just finish out my guard. And everything from this four guard up, razor work, scissor work. And then what I'm about to do though is I'm gonna cascade all the way back down this fade to really crispy this thing up. So. Let's sit here with our four and a half, rocking and rolling. Really, it's starting to look good now, and I haven't even done anything yet. So, like, that's how confident I feel that this is going to be a really cool haircut for Greg, and uh, he's really going to enjoy it for the next month. So, done with my four. Now, the hard job of, of going right back down, okay? So, if you remember correctly, did trimmer. Foil razor, razor. I did no guard all the way open. I did a one guard all the way open. I did a two guard closed. Did a four guard closed to a four and a half guard open. Now I'm gonna jump on my three guard open, close my three guard, jump on my two guard open, close my two guard, jump on my one and a half guard open close my guard, jump on a one guard open, close that, half guard open, close that, all the way back down. So basically you're cross checking, going back down the whole system, and once you get back down to that foil shaver aspect, this bad boy should be really, really pretty. So again, three guard, I'm gonna go kinda fast. Three guard open, melting it right into that four guard hearing some hair being taken. So of course we're on the right track. Really loving the haircut so far. Oops, I didn't have my finger on the guard. So you caught me right there, but I caught myself. So let me get back in this again. We all make, we all could get ahead of ourselves. We could all forget the small things, even myself. So I hope that this, these, videos train me as well to keep me, you know, keep me diligent and um, make me a better barber as well. So I thank you guys for watching again. And uh, hopefully we can do some more episodes, get some more models in here. And uh, more importantly, hopefully we see some comments and some likes and dislikes so we know what we could do better. Okay. 
So you could hear that hair being taken. Now I closed it all the way. So I have a closed three guard now. Okay, jumping on my two guard. Opened. Greg, you're looking good, bud. That felt better. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not hearing much hair, so let's just slowly close this two guard. There you go. A little bit more. Really working that occipital bone. All the way closed now, guys. Really watching which way his hair grows, making sure I'm going right into it. Really getting it nice and clean. Okay. From there, one and a half guard. Opened. Definitely hear some hair being taken. Okay, I'm gonna close it just a little bit. Continue my fade, continue my process. Closing my guard a little bit more. Loving it. Okay, close my guard all the way. Again, you can tell I don't have the newest clipper because of the sound, but again, it works great. I don't care, I love this thing. I'm sticking to it. So again, you don't need to have the newest tools, the best tools in the world um, to cut great hair. So even though I get a lot of great tools um, handed to me to work with, um, I could cut hair with any clipper or scissor you give me. So hopefully you all can too. So dropping my one and a half guard, jumping on my one guard, open. Keeping it nice and low. Working out those guidelines, any dark spots. Closing it. Working at every angle you can. Hair grows from all different angles. So if your clipper guard isn't going in all different angles, you know, you might miss a little hair. So don't be afraid to really work it out. Again, if you notice, I'm really put, moving his skin around, moving his skull around to make it easier for me to get the job done. And more importantly, it feels good for your client to be, for you to be in control, for him just to be relaxing there, to breathe. You know, when is, like, for an adult male or female, when is it their only obligation to sit still for 30 minutes or an hour? You know, like, that, that's such a luxury in today's world. So it's like, don't forget, like, you're really able to give them some peace, some energy, some relaxation in a really crazy world. So it's like, how amazing is that to be able to give your client just for 30 minutes and some peace, some relaxation, some love, some care, you know, that, that's, that's some stuff that is, is, you don't come by much in today's world. So to be that light in the world as a barber, as a stylist, pretty amazing. Close my guard all the way now, continue my track down. I'm really loving what I'm seeing. I encourage for any new stylist to talk to themselves, you know, while they're cutting hair to, to motivate yourself in your head to say, you know, if you're halfway through a haircut, it's looking good. Tell yourself, Reeve, you're doing a good job. Like this is looking really good. Speak it into existence because no one else is really motivating you too hard during the process. So yeah, maybe your client will be really pumped when you're all done. But you know, in this moment now, it, there are some scary moments. So like you're the one in your head needing to kind of uplift yourself, motivate yourself, and be your biggest team player is yourself. So make sure you're treating yourself right, you're being nice to yourself while you're cutting your hair. And even deeper, you, you have to be present. You know, If you're thinking about what you're about to have for lunch, what you're doing later on tonight, um, and you're not really being focused on your client in the moment, you're really doing him some injustice and yourself some injustice. So when they're in your chair, and you have clippers or scissors on them, give them all your attention. So half guard, all the way open. I'm gonna continue this fade.
closing it. So far, looking really, really good. Really grateful for this opportunity to cut Greg's hair. To be a part of Trailway Studios, this is uh, something new for all of us. So the producers, Greg and Henry, are being great hosts and allowing us to try this out. So be kind to us the first couple episodes as we work some of the kinks out. And uh, hopefully we can bring more and better content for you each and every week, okay? So I'm at completely closed now. Working on my fade, working down. So this is where it's nice to have two, two clippers on hand. Um, Cause here in a second, I'm about to pop off my half guard and go to a no guard on my clipper. Well, if you notice, I've been using this for a long time. So, you know, I could always, you know, spray some cool care to kind of cool it down, clean it off. But, you know, as soon as I pop this off, I feel like that blade's gonna be kind of hot. And so I don't wanna, and I'm about to go straight skin on him. So if you have a hot blade, you're gonna work in that fade and you're about to, you know, go to a no guard at all where it's just gonna be the metal on your client. Um, I think it's very important to jump on a different cooler clipper for this aspect. So I'm about to jump on my JRLs all the way open. And again, the reason I switch is just because it's a cool blade. I'm straight skin to skin, blade, you know, metal to skin on him. And um, I wouldn't want to burn him or make it uncomfortable. Again, I'm trying to make him feel confident and comfortable the whole service. So have this open. I'm going to start working out that guideline. Uh, one thing a professor told me is whatever you put that line in with is what you're going to get the line out with. So remember, I put that line in with my Tori Hanzo trimmers. And so that's what I'm probably gonna get it out of as well. But we need to get a little tighter, get closer to that opportunity. So no guard, completely open, working it right into his hair, the, the guideline. I could hear hair being taken, so I know it's, it's working. I know it's proper to kind of continue to sit here, let the tool do the work. Here in a second, I'm gonna close my guard. I like these because you could hear it click. Hear that click? Every little click is important. So I'm, I'm gonna do click by click on this. Really make this real buttery for our client. Again, I could hear hair being taken, so I know it's worthy to sit here and allow the tool to do the work. Again, if you notice, I'm being very aggressive on maneuvering that skin, lifting that skin up so my clipper could really get in there and do its job. Okay, another click. You could really hear that hair being taken, so we're getting tighter and tighter as we go. If you notice, I'm staying right on top of that guideline. And I'm not really going too much lower because that's what, basically that's what I'm trying to buff out is this last little bit. So really, I'm just working in a small eighth of an inch, less than a quarter of an inch space to really work this last little line out. Click. Everything again is looking really good. Again, another click. I'm gonna completely close now on my JRL clipper. So let's just really make sure we're done before we transition to our trimmer. Hopefully you could tell people watching how pretty this is starting to turn out. Yeah, the lighting in here is fire. Okay. Again, remember whatever you put the line in with is what you're gonna get the line out with. Again, I could hear hair being taken. So again, I honestly just can't leave this tool yet just cause I know it's still working. I know it's making the haircut look better. 
and we just, I mean, we're human. So really our bodies and mind really want us to get to point A to point B the fastest. So fast isn't, isn't always the best way with hair cutting. So, you know, be diligent, be in control of your mind. And just because you, you want to go fast and be done doesn't mean it should be done. So the more you could just push yourself to, to be as detailed and serious as possible in your hair cutting, the more your money's going to go up, your clientele's going to go up, your life's going to go up, everything. So right now, feeling really great. I'm dropping my JRL trimmers, picking back up my Hattori Hanzo hitters. Again, this was the one I put the line in with. Um, instead of coming up on him, I'm going to come down on him now because I don't want to take that tightness higher technically. I really want to get this nice and tight low. So let's tuck his neck strip in a little bit. So I'm going to start in just a very light touch. Start coming down. Get a nice touch with your trimmer. Whatever you put the line in with is what you're going to get the line out with. So this is me really trying to get that, that line out, make it sure it just looks super smooth for my gentleman. Again, clean it up a little C line. The eyebrow cleaned up. And then, like I said, I started down like this, right? And what I do now is I just flip and I melt right into it. Melt right into it. Melt right into it. Melt right into it. Right into it. Right into it. All the way. Okay. Let's so do the same thing on this side. We're going to start coming down. Following the shape of his skull. He just had a little bit of hair on his nose, so why not? We had the trimmer, I see it. Why not get in there, clean it up a little bit? Okay. So from there, let's just get tighter and tighter. So I have my JRL trimmers are a little tighter than my Tori Hanzo's. So I'm just going to get just a smidge tighter at the very bottom of his cut, make it feel crispy. And then from here, we'll do a little razor work. So So far, this is looking really beautiful. I'm very excited to get to the top. I'm actually uh, licensed as a cosmetologist who wanted to be a barber. So really, like I'm more trained and educated in scissor and razor work and cosmetology work. So this is my, what I'm scared of is the fade. So if I could put on a really pretty fade and be scared of it, so can you. Um, so let's hit, I like to let's blow them off again. About to do some razor work. So let's, let's, we're going to, again, I, I don't have a hot towel machine here at Trailway, so we're going to just kind of do a dry shave on him, kind of line up the perimeter of this cut, maybe do some eyebrow work. Again, I'm a big fan of the Aveda air control. It's super light, just adds a little bit of a grip to my blade. So let's just do one side at a time. Okay. When you're doing any kind of razor work, get your heart rate down, get your breathing down, be calm, be gentle, be patient, um, have a nice firm stance, make sure your client's comfortable. And then again, I always like to have a nice firm touch, nice 45. And we're just going to line him up just a little bit. Let, again, nice soft touch with the razor, nice angle, making sure the angle 
is not too deep where you're going to cut your gentleman. Um, I feel like most of the time when I cut someone, it's either using like the toe or the heel. Um, if you're just using the flat part of that razor, that's the safe zone. So just be diligent and keep that nice and flat on your client. Again, we're here to get every bad hair. So I always do a little bit of eyebrow work with my razor. It feels good, looks good, gives some confidence. You know, if you're working a razor around someone's eye, there's just a trust barrier that you're creating. And the more that you can trust each other, the more they're going to come to you, the more they're going to respect you. And uh, hopefully more importantly, the more they're going to refer you to their friends, family, coworkers, so you could really kind of create a great clientele for yourself. So around the ear, just be careful. Just cleaning this up. Whatever you do to one side, let's do to the other. A little bit of dry hairspray. Whatever you do to one side, let's do to the other. We're trying to keep it as symmetrical as possible. So if you notice, I worked on that one corner first. Came around. Do a little bit of eyebrow work. Again, we're trying to make them look even. Again, I can't thank you guys enough for watching this video. Hopefully, if you find anything entertaining or learn something from it, please share to your, your coworkers, to your students you're working with, to whoever you work next to. And uh, just know how important your job really is and the, the, the positive you can bring your community through giving a good service. So let's do a little bit of neck work now. You know, I like getting a nice firm touch. Make sure you're using your hands and fingers to, to help you. So I'm just adding some tautness to his skin. Okay, one last thing I'm going to do blow them off and then let's finish with our foil shaver and again that motion like I started with at the very beginning just that downward motion that's all we're gonna do really fan this out make it super buttery for him okay guys so that is our fade aspect of the cut. And um, so now we're gonna transition into our razor work and our scissor work. Like I told you, I was really, really hoping to only focus, um, cut majority of the top of his hair with my feather razor. I love this tool, it's kind of a dying, a dying art. You don't see too many people really go ham with the feather razor, so that's why I wanna kind of showcase what I can do with it. Um, with any razor work, scissor work, I like to have the hair fairly damp. Um, really allows that blade to really kind of get in there and cut. Doesn't allow any pulling. Um, so let's just get him damp. Again, his hair kicks to the right. Um, I like to section off my hair even when it's shorter like this. So what I will do is I will section off his bangs. And the way I section off bangs um, is pretty classic, pretty typical. I'll move him to the side so you can see what I do. I just take a normal comb, you know, seven inch comb brush his hair straight and then a good way to find out where his bangs are you just drop that like this on his head and right where that comb meets his hair kind of makes a little triangle right there that is his bang so I'll usually put my finger on where that comb and hair meet come over here draw a nice crisp line with my comb and then I'm going to portion off these bangs 
because you know the bang is such an important aspect of the cut. It's one of the first things you see when you open your eyes in the mirror. It's framing your face. So it's like I want to give these things a lot of attention um, at the very end. So that's why I like to go through and partition them off. Especially when I'm about to do a lot of razor work. You'll notice here in a second I'm about to go real ham on top. So I don't want to go so fast and I accidentally grab some of my bangs into the back of this cut. So let's add one more clip just to play it safe. Okay, so let's add some more water back here. Um, you can tell he has some quite a bit of strong cowlicks. He, his hair has a lot of texture, kind of kicks over. But you can tell that his hair wants to go to the right. So I'm a big fan of not fighting the hair. Let's work with the hair. The more we could work with the hair, um, I think the longer the haircut lasts and the better the haircut. So with this feather razor, you're going to use your thumb as a backstop so that hair goes inside and then you kind of flick up. So the majority of this cut is just me putting pressure on the back part of this blade and pulling up. So I'm going to dive in. I always like to go for the most struggling area. So if I'm looking at it, I don't know if you guys could tell, but this is kind of a really strong piece of his haircut that to me is what's kind of throwing the flow off. So I like to start in the most problematic area and kind of work around that. So I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to start terrorizing it up with this feather razor. Texture is king with his hair. So I'm trying to add a bunch of texture, break up some of these curl patterns. Nice, strong, deep cuts. Pushing the hair in the direction I want it to go. Taking off all these corners, adding this ton of texture. I mean, he's, I don't know if you could tell, but like his crown or where like is like way over here. You know what I mean? So like that's pretty kind of low and down. So like really a lot of this haircut is all kind of flowing real heavy right here. You know, this side you could tell is a real, has a nice flow to it. So really, we're going to really focus beating up this side of his hair a little bit more than we are on this side. So a lot of my focus will be majority kind of coming over here and really knocking this side down because it seems like this is the side that kind of bunches up on him the most. So if we would take it as short here that we do over in here, or if we take this stuff short as we do here, he's not gonna have much hair for texture. So just gotta be aware of where we need to leave length, where we need to take some length off, where we need to leave texture, where we need to take some texture off. Again, it's just a big puzzle. Each haircut is a puzzle and that's what makes it so exciting um, to work in this field because every day is something new. So let's just kind of bring, work on this crown a little bit, breaking it up. I could come straight up do a little razor over comb as well to kind of shatter cut. I could sit here as well, do scissor over comb. I could sit here and do trimmer over comb, clipper over comb, all kinds of stuff. But why not have some fun, really add a lot of texture, be a little different than the guy cutting hair next to you. And, uh, and it feels good. This is a cool, it's, it's a weird sensation to have a razor cut like this done to you, um, and they will come back for more. So again, just dwindling this down, watching the way his hair grows. His hair wants to kick to the right, so I'm, I'm constantly going in that shape, in that direction, because again, I don't want to fight the hair. I want to work with the hair. And the more you could work with the hair and keep it fairly natural and, and going in the shape it wants to go, that's what's going to give you a long lasting haircut. So my main objective, I would love to get my clients out a month. So that's my main goal. If I feel like, you know, this haircut's going to last you four weeks, we're on to something. So let's keep looking, keep pulling this up. If you notice, I have not touched any of my bangs. I really am just focused on this back crown. You know the, the mid part of this cut and then at the very end will we start to really focus on those bangs because those are kind of the money makers those are when he opens his eyes in the mirror that's the first thing he's going to see and if, if those bangs are off tilt or off whack you know i don't care how good we did on his fade or anything if this doesn't look good 
we're going to be in some problems. So let's keep working this out. Here in a second, I'm going to jump on some, maybe some texturizers or some thinning shears just to kind of break up some of this bulk. I like the texture we created so far. So let's go through. I'm going to jump on. So I have a 21 tooth um, blending comb, um, thinning comb, and then I have a 13 tooth texturizer. So his hair's thick. So I mean, I could probably do both. Um, I am, since, you know, I'm actually, the 13 tooth texturizer is almost the same as me using my razor and adding a lot of texture, you know? So I'm not gonna use that, actually, I'm actually gonna use my 21 tooth today. And my main objective now is just this last little bit from all that texture work we did with the razor, I need, you know, and from the, all that razor, you know, all that clipper work we did down here, you know, I, I, I need to soften this up just a little bit more, just for that transition from the fade to that razor work up in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this and I'm just gonna hit this little little bitty area right here from where my fade meets my, my razor work. And I'm just gonna bust that out just a little bit, buff it out, break it up a little bit. Just again, to create a more consistent, even flow, smoother, throw, smoother flow. And I just think it makes the haircut grow out better. So again, the longer I can make this haircut look good, work for his lifestyle, more better opportunity he might come back to get his haircut by me. So keep working this out. And here in a second, we really get to just focus majority on our bangs. Let's blow him off again. Just run around one more time. I don't think this is looking great. Okay, so let's transition over to our bangs now. So really you kind of have like three parts. You know, you have your, your sides, your back, you know, that clipper cut, you have your crown, and then I kind of transition into my bangs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drop my clips. And now my main focus is the bang. Well, my, I might go through if I see any hairs that are just kind of out of whack. Yes, I'll, I'll continue to dwindle those down, reduce those into the shape I want. But now let's really focus on his bangs. So let's blow them off one more time. I personally love working with a mirror. Um, the mirror never lies. I use my mirror for my best friend. So before I, I don't even look at my client or at the end of the haircut. I usually look at my mirror and look at the haircut, because the mirror will never lie. If I have anything wrong with my haircut, I could look at that mirror, and it shows me what's wrong. So not having a mirror here right now, a little different, but I could, again, as long as you kind of step back at a different perspective, like if I'm just looking everything from right here, it looks really good, but the trick is to step back a little bit and kind of look at your client and see how everything's going. So step, don't be afraid to step back, get a different angle, different view of the haircut, make sure everything's looking good. Because when you're right up here, you kind of have tunnel vision sometimes. So it might look great, but you step back, you kind of start seeing some, some different contrast or lines. So let's get back to our top, and we could finish this episode out, and we'll get this on our way. So let's get some water. And I could probably go ahead and use my razor up front, but I just feel as though, just with it being so precise, I could be precise with my razor, but I think it's, this is more of a scissor job up front. Um, so, like I said, I'm just gonna, he wears it to the right. I'm gonna instantly kind of see what's wrong. I just see this little kicker down here kind of being a little more than most. So we're just gonna kind of focus on dripping that out. Again, I'm just gonna work on hitting the corners. Nice small cuts. Keeping some length, I want to I want to add some long, you know, when he wears his hair up and spiky, you know, it kind of elongates his face. I think that's a great thing to create with a haircut, is to kind of make that face just a little longer. So again, I'm just hitting the ends, bringing it all together, melting it all together, tying it all together, 
from that, that texture work to this scissor work, a lot of point cutting. You know, right, if you look down a little bit, this, you know, right here is where I had his, his bangs marked off. So basically what I'm trying to do is, this is all that razor work I did. So I'm just trying to kind of tie that razor work into these bangs, just in this small little section right here. And so what I, how I do that is I just add nice little point cuts kind of tying all that texture we created with that razor back in here into his bangs. And one way I like to cut bangs, I like to jump on my blow dryer, cool setting only. And I like to cut with the blow dryer on, kicking those bangs up. So I know exactly where they're going to go, where they're going to be. Texture, texture, texture. Breaking it up, finding any corners or long pieces, you know. With the art of reduction, why I call it the art of reduction, again, you, you, you're starting off with a, a large mass with a lot of hair, an overgrown shape. And as we dwindle down and get closer to completion, you're actually looking for least the like less hair than you were at the start. At first, you're just like ripping all the bulk out, getting all the way, but as we dwindle down, if you notice, my I'm, I'm getting a little bit smaller detailed work. You know, at the very end, it's like at the end of you create a statue, you know, it's, it's the nose and the ear and the eyebrows. It's that small detail work that the artist probably did at the very last, you know, that brought that whole sculpture together. So same with the art of reduction with hair. You're, you're, you're slowly getting to a point where at the very end, I'm cutting off that, that last bad hair. So... Um, that's what it's all about, being picky to the very last bit of this haircut. So right now, I'm not even looking for the good hairs. I'm just looking for the couple bad hairs that are still in the mix um, that I'm trying to get out. So be diligent, be patient. One professor told me that the best tool is your hand, and th that is probably one of the, the truest things I've ever heard is that the best tool that you have is your hand. And um, it goes home with you. It has energy. It touches. It's able to grab all the tools you're already using. If you didn't have your hand, you couldn't do what you're doing. So really get in there. I think when you're getting closer to the end of the cut, really get in there. Start moving that haircut around. Pretend you're him. Pretend you're having a bad day and you run your hands through your hair. Pretend it's windy. Pretend he's in a convertible with his man. Like it's it's you got to just be the haircut sometimes. So when I get to this kind of last part. I'm really being kind of aggressive, really moving this hair around and looking for any bad hair that's showing, showcasing itself. And when it showcases itself, get it out of there. And then you're really going to kind of create such a beautiful piece of art, you know, really made for the client's face shape, lifestyle. And if you could put all those together, you're giving him a good service, you're giving him a good haircut, and you're creating a really great opportunity for yourself to be successful. So... I'm getting to a really good stopping point. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna be very careful with my razor, feather razor, turn this bad boy back on. And I'm just gonna get some of these baby hairs through here. Again, let's make sure we get all the way low. So I just draped them, dropped my neck strip. So let's make sure we get the very last bit. My, my rule of thumb is, you know, I even try to drip 
their shirt down a little bit more and get all the hair down in here as well. So I go nice and low. Okay, let's blow him off. Get all that loose hair off of him. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of him. Um, today, I'm gonna be using, we sponsored up with Layrite, using their cement clay today. Um, water soluble, tacky, firm, but still pliable. Um, great for salt and pepper hair. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. So I like to teach my client how to use the product. So I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna dip my, you know, get some product off my right index finger. Make sure the lid's nice and tight when you put it back. You don't want the product to dry out. What I do is for my right hand, I put it into my left palm, okay? I get all the product off of my finger, so now it's just in my palm. From here, it's called muddling. I like to muddle the product, especially the stiffer ones, just in my palm, using my index finger, the very flat part of it, okay? Softens it up into a cream. Clean off your index finger, so it looks like this now. From here, we're gonna close our hands, but we're gonna keep our fingers out wide and we're gonna go in a circular motion to warm it up and to break it up more, okay? So now you have equal products on your palms. From here, we're gonna close our hands and we're gonna go into a praying motion, like a praying mantis, okay? And what that's gonna do, that's gonna get the product all the way to your fingertips. And most importantly, it's not gonna have any like gunk inside your, your fingers when you go to put it on. I personally like to start in the back and work my way forward and make an exterior shell with the product. A lot of guys, what they do wrong is they get the product and instantly put it all up front. Do not do that. Your hair up front does not need that much product, okay? Most people, they need the product in the back and the sides. So my first initial swipe, I like to, like I said, I make an exterior shell. So I like to just seriously, almost like a dipped ice cream cone, go through this product and make an exterior shell on top of the product. I'm not working the product into the hair, I'm working the product onto the hair. And once, as though I feel that an exterior shell is even, I will start to run that pr product a little deeper into the hair, allowing that texture to kind of creep up, pop out. And guys, there we go. Same white hairspray we did for the, the, the shave. Why not just kind of finish the look? Again, a light hairspray or a dry shampoo on the low part of that fade kind of makes it pop a little bit more. I'm gonna hit them with a little bit of aftershave. This is Johnny B, great stuff. It's their PM, the blue one, not the green one. We don't like the green one, blue. So, a little aftershave. And let's show off the haircut, okay? So again, Nice low fade, a lot of texture, salt and pepper hair, gives a lot of contrast from that tight fade up into that dark hair. Um, just looking at him, I'm really proud. And more importantly, for our first episode, I think we did really great. So thank you again so much for uh, joining the Art of Reduction. And uh, thank you Trailway Studios for allowing the time. Thank you, Greg. And uh, hopefully we'll see you back next week. Thanks.